Well, these programmes are drawn from the incomplete collected works of Jay Grenfell and composer Richard Adamsall with recent musical editions by William Blezard. And I'm going to start with a sketch called Ing Lit, English Literature. <laughs> you know, one of the things I think that the English do best are eccentric women. And this is the wife of the vice chancellor of an Oxbridge University. The scene is always the same. We are in a book lined study. And the windows in there start rather near the ground. They have stone frames and they, they do this kind of thing. They go up there and then they come down again and then they do it again. <laughs> Gothic. <laughs> And in this room, there are many group photographs about. And over the door, a pair of crossed oars. <laughs> and on the sofa and the armchairs is a chintz designed by William Morris. And it's probably original. <laughs> We're coming in in the middle of a conversation. Well, you know, it's really awfully difficult to describe my grandmother, but uh, she looked rather like the great Duke of Wellington, only rather prettier, which of course was just as well. <laughs> you know, there is a picture of her in the front of my new book, Mr. Wimble. I don't know, have you read my book? No, I know it's so difficult to find time to read what one really wants to. <laughs> no, it was only since you have so very kindly invited me to come on your television programme in order to discuss my book, I thought, you know, you just might possibly have read it. <laughs> but I do know how it is. Um, w were you up at this university? <laughs> oh, how very interesting. No, I don't know it, but I shall now make a point of going there. I, I rather imagine the reason you've invited me to come on the programme is because my book won a literary prize. <laughs> yes, I, I thought so. I must tell you that I was quite unaware of the existence of this prize until I actually won it. <laughs> it doesn't make it any the less attractive, but it turns it into what you might call a surprise prize. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, it's not my first book. No, Mr. Wimble, I've written several lives. And the reason I've written this life of my grandmother is that she was a very remarkable woman, and I liked her. She lived a long time, and she never lost interest. <laughs> she was really consumed with interest to the very last gasp. <laughs> and I, I think 95 is a goodly span. And of course, that's why I've called the book The Long Result of Time, which I don't have to tell you is Tennyson. I expect you have Loxley Hall by heart, and I so wish I had. <laughs> and then, of course, she was a character, and I think we ought to celebrate our characters. You know, it seems to me they're getting rarer and rarer. <laughs> I don't know where they've all gone. <laughs> I suppose they've been ironed out. I must say, there's one thing about my grandmother, you could not have ironed her out. <laughs> oh, no, she was far too hilly. <laughs> Yes, indeed, she was an intellectual. Oh, yes, she came from a very long line of intellectuals. I suppose the nearest parallel might be the great families of Darwin and Huxley. And like the Darwin-Huxley lot, my grandmother's family were also very much concerned with natural science and, of course, genetics. And um, my, my grandmother's special area of interest was the world of very small mammals. Yes, wasn't it interesting? <laughs> Do you know, she had a long and a very close relationship with a small red squirrel. <laughs> yes, indeed, with a bushy tail. <laughs> no, you know, I've never known a squirrel at all well, but my grandmother did. And I think it's interesting that as well as being very scientific, she was also a great believer in reincarnation. <laughs> and she was convinced that this small red squirrel was in fact the reincarnation of a much loved cousin who had been gathered at an earlier date. <laughs> and she always called the squirrel Edwin after this much loved cousin. And I don't think it's a good name for a squirrel, do you? <laughs> I don't really know what you should call a squirrel. 
I suppose Nutkin would do. <laughs> of course, if you had Greek, you could call him Skios, couldn't you? <laughs> I expect you've got Greek. I wish I had. <laughs> well, I have, uh, you know, a little bread and butter Greek. Just enough to go through Greece. Oh, hello, Mrs. Finley, dear. What have you got there? The afternoon paper. My dear, out of the goodness of your heart, conceal it from me, will you, until I feel strong enough to face the headlines? Yes, um, Mrs. Finley, is there a tolerable chance of your finding yourself in close proximity to a kettle? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Mr. Wimble and I are both very well disposed towards the idea of some tea. And, and, and something crunchy? Yes, that would be lovely. Good, that's lovely. Oh, I do like talking about my grandmother. She was a great dazzler. Only don't let's talk about me. Oh, I'd really very much rather talk about my grandmother. Oh, well, what do television viewers want to know about one? Likes and dislikes. Yes, I've got plenty of them. Well, now, which do I like best, men or women? <laughs> I think it rather depends what for. <laughs> familiar with men. <laughs> well, you see, my husband and my father were both masters of colleges in this university, and uh, my husband is now vice-chancellor, and we have four very agreeable sons. So, you see, it really is men all the way along. Do you know, I don't know what I would have done with a daughter had I had one, but, of course, the question never arose. <laughs> I, I do have a rather a frilly little granddaughter about whom I'm very prejudiced. I think she's a little bit too aware of her appearance and her clothes for one of only six. But um, I'm very fond of her. <laughs> uh, clothes, yes, I do like clothes very much on other people. Well, I don't know, somehow on me, they always seem to suffer a sea change. <laughs> they look quite promising in the shop. And then when I get them back to my cupboard, they, they aren't entirely without hope. But when I put them on, they tend to deteriorate with a very strange rapidity. <laughs> and one is so sorry for them. <laughs> I'll tell you what I do rather like, hats. Could I perhaps wear a hat if I come onto your programme? Alas, I do not possess an informal hat. I think perhaps I'll... I think my hat's... Well, they rather tend to be purposeful, and I'd better ask my advisor, I think. My advisor? <laughs> my grandson, Edward. He's only 11, but he's very wise. And he knows rather more about the world of today than do I. And I may tell you, when I told him you had so kindly invited me onto your programme, he said, go ahead, Gaga. <laughs> With a certain deadly accuracy, he calls me Gaga. He said, <laughs> he said, go ahead, Gaga, live dangerously. <laughs> well, I must uh, confess, that advice has somewhat unnerved me, and it does prompt me to put a question to you, Mr. Wimble. Are you very cruel to the people who come onto your television program? I see. And um, do they like that? Oh, it's the viewers who like it. <laughs> well, I wonder if I should. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Finley, dear. We'll come and consume it instantly. In the dining room. Lovely. Right. Well, some tea. Well, now, I am very grateful for your invitation, and I'm going to give it a great deal of thought. Um, something has just crossed my mind. Mr. Wimble, what would happen now, supposing I did come onto your programme, and I was to be very cruel to you? <laughs>